สนับสนุนโดยบริษัท IRPC จำกัดมหาชนการบินไทยการบินไทยรักคุณเท่าฟ้าครับคุณจอนแอนท่านผู้ชมนี้เราก็ we going to talk about uh, the stock pile of this tag คุณจอน before the auction the 3 3G auction or the telecom stock shot up what's happened now Well, what you see, I think, there, first of all, the industry has to go through a few more hurdles. So there's probably a little bit of an overhang right now until mm -hmm. we all get the license in hand. So it's retracted a, a, a bit. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the not only the guidance of all the companies and also the analysts' expectations, mm -hmm. there's still high hopes on the industry. Mm -hmm. and, and the big transition for the industry is when we go from the concession to the license, there is a regulatory savings. Mm -hmm. And what the investors are, are wanting is how does that come back into the company how does that go back to shareholders mm -hmm. obviously there's a large investment to, mm -hmm. to get there we have to to build a new network we've got to get um, new services out there we've got to do a lot with billing so there's there's quite an investment mm -hmm. but at the end of the day there also should be some savings so mm -hmm. there's some speculation that that should drive the have you had uh, any stock conference stock. call with the investment analysts you know explaining yeah, to them yeah. we, we have but we've said we need to wait a little bit it was still premature uh, until you have a license in hand <laughs> mm -hmm. and you have a <laughs> firm business plan mm. that's a little premature so mm. uh, we've told them to wait until Q4 mm. okay. I see do you expect mm -hmm. uh, business growth once you have the 3g to uh, I mean how much is your projected growth you know annually well I think for, for I think, earnings yeah. yeah I think earnings growth for 213 um, again I think it's a bit premature because mm. 213 is about building this network and getting mm. that going yeah. we won't see a, a, a real kick in the earnings growth until 214 mm. and you won't see much of a regulatory savings also in 213 that's mm -hmm. coming in 214 mm -hmm. so again it's a long-term investment mm -hmm. investors have to be a bit patient but um, what we are talking about is still growth mm -hmm. and in the West Europe and the US we mm -hmm. don't see much growth left in, in our in our sector mm -hmm. so at least we're still talking high single-digit growth which mm -hmm. is great mm -hmm. and the fact that Thailand is a little bit low on the data curve we still mm -hmm. have a lot of data growth left in, mm -hmm. in our industry mm -hmm. yet so mm -hmm. there's still growth ahead mm -hmm. So uh, still a lot of room for data business. What about the devices? We have seen the launch of iPhone 5 in Thailand and soon maybe the mini iPad. What are the opportunities for devices? This, this is probably an area that uh, really excites us the most. Yes. Um, I think we sometimes get consumed that this is all about network and getting yes. the network mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. But in Thailand, we still only have about 10 to 12 percent of all users with a smartphone. Mm -hmm. So we've got quite a job as an industry and also mm -hmm. in our retail um, sectors to get those devices, first of all, down in cost. Yes. So that everyone can afford a smartphone mm -hmm. and then find a way to get it out to our users. Mm -hmm. So there will be, uh, I would, what I would say is a massive effort in the next yes. couple of years um, to get smartphones out. Uh, example today, um, we're all launching iPhone, uh, as Five. you know, and uh, that's iPhone the upper right? It's, but I tell you what, I see mm -hmm. iPhone fives in the hands of people that I wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's quite a what device. It's mm -hmm. quite a device, mm -hmm. um, and it's um, uh, it's really changing the way we mm -hmm. do things. Mm -hmm. uh, we're seeing iPad Mini coming uh, shortly. Um, mm -hmm. we're, we're seeing upgrades uh, like I've never seen mm -hmm. in, in Minis and in mm -hmm. medium pads, and also just plain handphones. Mm -hmm. So uh, how many pre-orders or orders have you got for iPhone 5? I didn't even ask this morning. <laughs> when, when, when I left the office, there was a, quite a line coming okay. into the office. Uh -huh. But uh, what, what we're trying to do now is, is package this thing together. Mm -hmm. It's not just a device, and then it's not go find a SIM card and then mm -hmm. find a, a plan. Yes. What, what DTAC is doing right now is, is changing its retail focus. When you come to a shop, mm -hmm. it's one-stop shop. Mm. We want to give you a great device at a great package price mm. with a tariff plan, data usage, yes. um, service in case you have problems in the future. Mm -hmm. Also teaching and training. We've got what we call iBuddy so we can teach our consumers how to use it and what to do with it. Mm -hmm. So we're converting all of our stores into 50% retail and 50% s uh, service. Mm -hmm. We think that this is the way to go. Mm -hmm. And I think this is one effort to push devices Uh, mm -hmm. and smartphone devices into the public. Mm -hmm.
Mm. Oh, your market share will be like in the next one or two years from now. Mm. Well, all my shareholders hope that it goes up, but mm. but I imagine. What is it now? <laughs> we're at about 31 percent market share. Mm. That's the, the that's a roughly the revenue market share. Mm. Uh -huh. But obviously, all shareholders tell their management teams you must mm. gain gain market share. So I'm sure that it's mm. going to be very competitive. So uh, the, are the prices of your uh, devices competitive? You know, compared to the other v vendors. You I well, I think so because um, we're still selling uh, the number of devices that's above our expectation. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that we found um, a soft spot in the market yet. Mm -hmm. Definitely, this will be a competitive area. Again, you know, people are worried where is the savings going to come from? Mm -hmm. But if we have this perceived savings, you might see it now in better device bundles and better service packages with those uh, mm -hmm. devices. Um, the intent really is make it easy. Mm -hmm. Make it cheap enough that people can explore the internet and mm -hmm. get connected. Mm -hmm. And the only way we can get that penetration rate mm -hmm. is to really keep those those tariffs down and, and add more value. Mm -hmm. So it'll be a very competitive space uh, in the years years to come. Mm -hmm. So how fast uh, your customer will migrate from 2G to 3G devices? It's 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 a tough one to predict. The the smartphone penetration right now in Thailand is growing faster than most countries. Mm -hmm. um, probably again because we were a bit behind, and now that the three G networks are coming, there's a, there's a pent up demand. Yes. But it's hard to predict. Um, mm -hmm. I would hope to see that within a year or two that we mm -hmm. can double the penetration rate. I mean, mm -hmm. remember I said we're about about 10 to 12 percent smartphone mm -hmm. penetration. Mm -hmm. If we can take that up to to 25, 30 within a year or two, that would be great. Mm -hmm. And then once you get to that point, what I've seen in other countries is a tipping point. Mm -hmm. If that many people have it, to double it again, it mm -hmm. doesn't. It's not uh, unheard of. Mm -hmm. And we see in, in a lot of the Western countries right now nearly 100 percent penetration mm -hmm. in smartphones. Mm -hmm. So it goes quite fast. Mm -hmm. Are there enough outlets for you? I mean, detect outlets for you. Do you plan to add more? Retail? Uh, yeah, retail shops. I'm, I'm happy with the penetration that we have in our retail. Mm -hmm. um, I think Thailand has a great retail sector in handphones, mm -hmm. not just within the industry, mm -hmm. but also independent retailers. So when mm -hmm. I go up country, um, I'm seeing devices nearly on every corner. Mm -hmm. um, we, we obviously can't be on every corner. Mm -hmm. So we want to work with those retailers and hopefully um, just have an extension to what we're mm -hmm. doing. Mm -hmm. uh, but no, our intention is not to build uh, mm -hmm. any more shops. Mm -hmm. So you, I hope, I think you're confident that DTAC can keep the number two market position and even challenge the number one, the market leader in coming years? Well, I have a chairman and uh, a set of shareholders that sure remind me of <laughs> that's that. That's your Every, job. They remind <laughs> me that that's my job. So yeah, we're going we're gonna to compete. And, and again, I think competition, healthy competition on a mm. level playing field really mm. brings what every consumer wants. Mm. Great service, lower prices, better value. And that's what we're going to see in the years to come. So how far are you from the third uh, players? You are number two, 31 percent, right, of the yeah, revenues? Yeah, I, well, we got a little bit of a cushion, but uh, it's still very competitive. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how about uh, looking forward? There would be 4Gs. How is that, uh, that prospect you know, will come out? 4G, um, I'll give you a few numbers that I think are quite interesting. Yes. We have around 150 3G networks uh, worldwide mm -hmm. operating. 150. 150. Mm -hmm. yes. 20 of them are in Africa. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 20 in Africa. Mm -hmm. Of the 150, 50 mm -hmm. or one third have been upgraded to 4G. Mm -hmm. So it's happening very fast. Mm -hmm. Mostly uh, in Europe and US? Pretty spread. I, you, you'll see it uh, spread quite, quite evenly, I would say. Yeah. Um, so the question is, um, we need to keep our eye on that because we don't want to fall behind again. Mm -hmm. There's a very unique opportunity that Thailand has uh, coming up. Uh, right now, the, the most um, or the best spectrum to put LTE or 4G in is 1800, mm -hmm. which is where That's we have yeah, yeah, which is where we have a lot of our 2G mm -hmm. operations right mm -hmm. now. Uh, coming up uh, next year, there's 25 megahertz of mm -hmm. 1800 that come out of concession. Mm -hmm. If the government chose to, through the regulator, to auction that out, mm -hmm. 
-hmm. there's an option that we could have 4G mm -hmm. under license in Thailand next year. Mm -hmm. Whether that happens or not, we'll see. Mm -hmm. But it, it is an option for us. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we need to keep our eye on 4G, mm -hmm. make sure that we don't fall And you think that it will numbers. come faster than we expect? I, I hope so. Again, we're, we're working alongside the regulator and, and others to, to figure out how to do this. But mm -hmm. the option is there for us if it works for all stakeholders. So 3G and 4G can work together if 4G happen to be operational soon, as you mentioned? It works very well together. Again, mm. where the, the difficult part is 4G devices. Mm. Um, those are just coming out right now. iPhones. The uh, iPhone 5 will have 4G in it. Already? It has 4G mm -hmm. in the United mm -hmm. States. Um, so the, the fi iPhone 5 has it, and then we're seeing a lot of small dongles and, and mm -hmm. devices that you would plug into your, mm -hmm. to your laptop. Mm -hmm. But 4G will come into phones quite quickly. Mm -hmm. um, it has a little bit of a, a battery drain issue. Mm -hmm. um, power. But, yeah, power issue. But you'll see those, those come, or that technology What's the big difference uh, between 4G and 3G? The speed, how much uh, faster? I, I ran a test today in my office. Mm -hmm. uh, um, in the office, uh, we were running about five or six megabits um, mm -hmm. on 3G. Mm -hmm. uh, the 4G test that I ran was 90. 90. Mm -hmm. 90. Now, there were no users on it, mm -hmm. so again, very lightly loaded. Mm -hmm. loaded. But, uh, wow. Um, I can tell you when, you, when you load the systems, mm -hmm. though, mm -hmm. we should see uh, five times more speed again mm -hmm. than what we see on 3G. Mm -hmm. And that's when you get into real-time services now. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. when you do video and you don't see the donut buffering any no. longer. You don't have to wait mm -hmm. for things. So 4G just takes us to a whole other place. Mm -hmm. It's a new whole world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you expect uh, the Thai regulator maybe to consider sooner than expected? Uh, I think uh, uh, it's hard to say. I just think we have the option and uh, mm -hmm. we'll see what happens. The industry is talking about it now mm -hmm. and you've seen comments both out of the regulator and, and, uh, and through the minister about mm -hmm. 4G. Mm -hmm. um, let's get 3G. Uh, uh, operation. Let's get 3G. <laughs> let's get 3G out the door, uh -huh. and, and then we'll talk about 4G. <laughs> but you mentioned earlier that uh, Laos, our neighbor, already starting 4G service for next week, uh, same summit. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that's quite a shame on Thailand, maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, it's we just need to keep our eyes open. It, it's happening, and uh, uh -huh. I, I think we have opportunities to keep keep ahead now. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so good, John. Thank you for joining our program. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you. Thank you.